Is our currency and financial system the best possible system, or can we do better? Why are we talking about the Fed's record? Well, of course, as you probably know, we are fast approaching the uh, Fed's centennial, the 100th anniversary of its establishment. The Federal Reserve Law was passed in 1913, and uh, the centennial seems to be as good a time as any to ask whether the thing has done the job it's supposed to have done. Moreover, as you also know perfectly well, we've just been through, or we're still getting through, one of the worst financial crises of um, post-Federal Reserve era, a crisis that has many people wondering whether the Fed is really the best institution we can po possibly have to manage our monetary and financial affairs. So for both of those reasons, I think it's a high time that uh, some attempt be made to judge whether the Federal Reserve has in fact been a success or a failure. Now, uh, I should say that when I ask that question, I'm not asking whether the Fed has been a success in the sense that it has accomplished a lot for certain special interest groups or for the bureaucrats who run it or for the federal government. Yes, of course the Federal Reserve has been a, a great success uh, judged by such criteria, but at least the case can easily be made. No, the question I'm asking is, has the Fed succeeded in doing what it says it's supposed to have been doing? That is the question I'm asking. You can ask that other question, that's all right with me, but it's not the question I'm asking, and it's not the question that we need to ask if we're going to just, just make a case one way or the other for whether this thing should go on existing or not. So that's the question I wish to address. Now when I talk about this subject, <laughs> I have to admit, I, I can't help thinking about uh, The Wizard of Oz, and particularly the scene in, that, in the movie about The Wizard of Oz, in which uh, Dorothy and the others first approach uh, the great Oz. And this, of course, is the image of him you see. And the reason I think of this image is because I think a lot of people are in awe of the Federal Reserve. I think the Federal Reserve, among its other successes, has been very successful at creating a myth about itself as being an omnibenevolent and omnipotent, etc. institution. And so when you proceed to try to make the case that in fact the Fed has been a flop, you have to deal with this myth and you have to deal with this impression people have that, you know, uh, this, 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 this institution can do no wrong. And so I feel sometimes that uh, I'm playing the part that Toto plays in the movie of getting behind all the, you know, the, uh, the smoke and mirrors and colored lights and drawing back the curtain on the ordinary being, or in, my, in this case, beings who run this institution and the very human flaws that the institution actually suffers from, and they're very, very serious, uh, though human flaws uh, uh, indeed. In the Great Depression, before Canada set up a central bank, how many banks failed in Canada? Here's the answer. 5,000 U.S. banks failed in the first, uh, from 1929 to 1933. These are some of the Canadian bankers. So there was an alternative arrangement that really would have solved the problems. It wasn't a central bank arrangement. Today we can't replicate exactly that kind of system. One thing that's gone and may be difficult to replace ever again is the gold standard. Getting that back is very hard. But the point is there are alternatives and we should be talking about them right now because right now we have a system that's as bad as any system this country's ever had.